Hi, this is Andrew Reversa again with Impact Soundworks, and today I want to walk you through the demo I wrote for Shreddage 2X called Shred the Night. Uh, this was a sort of a power metal, um, very Dragon Force-esque track with uh, over-the-top symphonic elements, synths, and of course, uh, lots of Shreddage 2 for the rhythm and the lead. Uh, so if you like this, definitely check out Dragon Force, uh, Japanese composer Revo, um, SSH, Kenji Ito, all that good stuff. I'm going to play the song first all the way through just so you can hear it uh, and see it in FL Studio, which is where I composed it. And then I'll go through some of the individual elements and uh, show you how I did all the uh, cool little tricks. So here we go. This is Shred the Night. Okay, so that's the demo, and uh, I apologize for any glitches in the playback. Uh, besides being a little bit CPU intensive, even with some bounce tracks, uh, of course I'm recording a 1080p video while playing it, so the computer is being a bit overtaxed. Anyway, uh, so let's start with the sort of the foundation, in my opinion, which is the rhythm guitars. Uh, so let's check out one of the patterns like this. So in terms of the sequencing, which is, you know, of course, the most obvious here, we're using power chords and then some single notes. And everything is pretty quantized to the grid, mostly just 16th notes and eighth notes. Um, the most important thing here is that I'm not using sort of truncated note lengths. So let me just give you an example of what that sounds like if I were to shorten the note lengths. Now you might like a sound like that. However, I think it's very easy for this to start sounding unrealistic, especially at lower tempos. Let me lower it to here, for example. It's got a kind of a gated sound, um, which again, you might want, but for the most part, I think it tends to sound better when you connect your muted notes like this. Because in reality, when a guitarist is playing, and they're hitting the same string over and over again, uh, like this, um, the string doesn't totally stop vibrating. It sort of continues on, unless they're intentionally muting each note, stopping, and then playing the next one, which I think is not quite as realistic. Uh, of course, all this being said, I'm, I'm actually not a guitarist at all. That's why I made Shreddage, so uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is a standard double tracking setup. I have two guitars with the same settings. And under articulations, this is pretty much the default that comes with Shreddage 2X. We have sustains on the high velocities, so 70 and above, and then mutes from 0 to 69. So that's why uh, these notes here 
that's a full power chord, and then here's a mute. And generally speaking, the lower the velocity, the more muted it's going to sound. So for example, this cuts off very quickly, it's very aggressive. Whereas if I increase it to like here, it's a little less muted. And uh, there's about five layers of mutes that we recorded. So um, variation in the velocities when you're doing rhythm parts like this is really important uh, if you want that extra realism and that extra variation. Other than that, the rhythm guitar parts are pretty simple throughout the song. Um, so here it's just single notes, up an octave, and then down to that really awesome uh, drop A flat tuning, which is one of the things that makes uh, Shreddage 2 sound so good uh, for this kind of music, the ability to go uh, all the way down to a low G. That's where it starts sounding very brutal. And then here, a little bit later in the song. Here I'm using some 30 second note sequencing. And again, the velocities, you see I'm varying them uh, with each pattern. So that way it sounds a little bit more human, a little bit more, um, a little less mechanical, I should say. I'm not a great keyboardist, which is why I just sort of sequenced everything here. I'm not great. Thankfully, Shreddage 2 has some built-in variation. Uh, not every note was played you know, exactly the same way. So that's really, really good when uh, you're just sequencing quantize like this. If you have a pattern that you like and you want it to sound exactly the same on render, you can hit the round robin reset button. So that way, when you play it through, it's gonna sound the same every time. Um, otherwise, if you don't reset this, it's gonna keep cycling through. In terms of the, uh, the setup of the patches themselves, I have the uh, Screamer pedal being used on, the, on one guitar and then the Byte EQ. But on the second guitar, I just have the Byte EQ. Otherwise, the engine settings are pretty standard. I'm using a little bit of pick offset and some uh, release noise, which I think is very important as well, and then anti-repetition. But what you're probably more interested in is how I mix the guitars. And again, I'm not an expert, so this is sort of just my take on it. Here's the first guitar on the first output. So it's got a nice full um, sound. It's not too bright. So basically the amp being used here is Guitar Rig 5. It's a custom patch. I have Van 51 and then I have a matched cabinet, but instead of using the Van 51 cabinet, I'm using a gratifier. Now, if you don't have Guitar Rig 5, you can actually pick it up for free, or at least the player version, from the Native Instruments website. Uh, and I, I really enjoy this uh, amp sim. Uh, it's easy to use. Here I'm using a rhythm patch, uh, turning up the bass, scooping the middle. Um, but I'm also EQing it, and I think the EQ is really what makes it sound the way it does. So I'm boosting the high and scooping the mids after the amp, and then I'm also scooping the mids here. So without that, right here, let me turn off the EQs. That, that EQ gives it just that extra bite, which I think sounds good. Um, now let's take a look at the second guitar. This uses a patch from Revolver HPSC. This is the Heavy Chug preset from the Shreddage preset collection. <laughs> And here again, I'm doing a little bit of pre-scooping with the EQ before it goes into the amp, also reducing the gain because that particular patch and revolver is very, very high gain. So then again, together, they sound like this. But I should mention that the EQ that you use on the guitar mix is just as important, if not more so. And I'm doing some real scooping here. I mean, it's, it's very processed. Um, and I'm also boosting the sort of the powerful 100 hertz range and then taking the highs away a little bit. So let me turn off the effects on the guitar mix while keeping the amps the same and hear what that sounds like. Now, of course, this is up to your preference. I personally like that, that nice scooped metal sound but you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's just uh, my, my own approach is uh, taking out those mids to leave room for other sounds. 
some of the other elements used, we have uh, Stephen Slate drums, which is being used for the uh, the drum kit. This is the Slate's hybrid kit. And then in terms of the mixing on the drums, uh, I turned down the room mics on the kick, and then I'm, I'm doing this here. So I have a scooped mid-range again. I'm reducing the bass because the kick originally had a little bit too much of that. Um, and then I have it running into two different kinds of compression and saturation. I have Fab Filter Saturn, which helps uh, fill out the drum kit, gives it um, extra punch, and I'm compressing the bass range here and giving it some tape drive. And then also in the high range, so this is split at about 220 hertz. And then I have the glue, which is compressing it even further. So uh, just as an example here, let me play. I'm going to unmute the kit temporarily. I had this muted for rendering. Uh, and I'm using, by the way, an unprocessed kit as well for the symbols because I didn't want to squash those too much. So let's hear that without any effects at all. Basically, these extra um, processes here, like the compression, the distortion, <laughs> look at this EQ. This is what happens when you, you're mixing things for too long. You have something boosting and uh, cutting at the same frequency. Awesome. Don't pay attention to that. But anyway, my preference is for a nice full kit sound. I don't really like stuff that sounds very small and clicky, so that was why I used that particular processing. Also, there are other elements in the track, like orchestra, which is coming from... Uh, Project Sam Cinematic Orchestral Brass. I'm using Marcato patches and some reverb. It's nothing special. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, I kind of just put that in quickly. And then also there are synth sounds too. So we have, uh, for example, Zebra 2 is being used for some of the stabs. Also massive. And then later on, we have this awesome lead from Zebra. And this is a lead I actually use all the time, Harmonious PWM. It's a patch I made. Uh, but you don't want to hear about that. So let's, let's go back to the guitars. Um, that's just to give you a sense of what else I used. Let's take a look at the guitar sequencing for the lead. And I think the lead is really what I wanted to focus on with this particular demo. So first, the mixing on the lead. I'm using 1993 Hot Solo Rig for the effects. And then I'm EQing it. I'm taking out the bass and boosting the high. Um, really, what I want to show is how I, I sequenced everything. Now, I have extra pick sound enabled, which means on the high velocities, it's adding a little bit of extra attack. If you hear that sort of extra like uh, lead in, let's hear what it sounds like without it. So here's without, here's with. I'm using that a lot throughout the song for the lead. It helps add a little bit of extra realism. That's actually the sound of the guitarist sort of playing, um, strumming several strings before hitting the actual uh, string to be played. Most of this is the sustain articulation. But there are some transitions here as well. So notice uh, when I use a low velocity in an overlapping note, that is that triggers a portamento slide by default. So if we just play that, that's that's that glissando slide. If I didn't do that, it would just be this, which obviously doesn't sound as good. But there's also some pitch automation happening. This is the pitch wheel. For the most part, what I did was I sort of tried to play this with the actual wheel, record the automation, and then tune it up and sort of uh, fix it just in the piano roll here. So having that 
string bend, I think, um, and I do that throughout, that helps realism. And then also, I'm using some mod wheel to introduce vibrato, so that's sort of throughout. Now that effect there, that glissando down, that's just a portamento slide. So here we have this note, and then this note. Uh, they're overlapping, but rather than holding this note out, so just as an example. So what what's, what's playing there is a recording of this note sliding to a D sharp, almost an octave lower, or over an octave lower. But I'm reducing the length of the note so that we don't hear the sustained sound. And that way you get the sound of basically the guitarist just sliding down the neck without actually hitting a new note. So again, more glissandos or portamento, and then there's more pitch stuff going on. This, this is all, um, it's my, my best attempt at emulating how a guitarist would play things, because again, I'm not actually a guitarist. Uh, I don't know how to play guitar at all, um, and that's why I made Shredge to begin with. So this is sort of based on what I know of listening to people play guitar and studying it. Like that pitch thing there, and using vibrato for just part of that note. Otherwise, this is just sustain. Um, I'm not using any tremolo or anything like that. And we have one more slide. So that probably could have been longer, actually. I probably could have done that. And this is a pinch squeal, actually. So that's um, without a pinch squeal, and then I'm hitting the key switch for the pinch squeal. Or, oh, actually, I have it on uh, latch mode, so. So this key switch actually needs to be held for that to trigger. Uh, the one other thing to note is that I'm using some fret noise throughout, and that just helps add a little bit of extra realism If the guitarist were sort of moving over the frets with his or her finger, it would add a little bit of extra noise, and that is that is what I was trying to emulate with that. Okay, so that part is relatively simple. Um, and then we have here basically more of the same. Oh, another thing, this is a hammer-on. So rather than having two unconnected notes, it's a uh, by overlapping them at a higher velocity, it's playing a hammer-on. So again, we're using Mod Wheel to emphasize some of these more sustained notes. Uh, and then there's also some pitch stuff going on here, like uh, like here, for example, I'm bending up. Now notice I'm not usually bending down, it's because uh, guitarists tend to uh, bend up to a note just because of how the strings work physically. Or if you're gonna bend down, you wanna bend down uh, after you've already bent up. And then here, rather than using the mod wheel vibrato, it, it's just uh, using pitch wheel vibrato instead. So just going uh, like. So sometimes alternating the mod wheel vibrato with uh, pitch bend is a good way of making it sound a little bit more realistic and less static. And let's see, did I do any other automation here? Just making sure. So later in the song, you'll, you'll uh, see I did use some other automation, but not yet. Okay, so then we have this part here. Here's the synth.
Okay, so here's where there are some tricks happening. Um, go ahead to this part. As with earlier in the song, there are some slides happening. There's some uh, vibrato, and I think I might have used some pitch. Uh, no, actually, I didn't hear. What I did do is I changed the portamento time. So there's an option in Shreddage 2, if you go to the articulations page, you can change the, uh, the speed or the timing of the slide. So it's 148% right now, which is a little bit faster than normal. That can be adjusted down and up. And if you right click on this, that can be assigned a MIDI CC. So if I, uh, if you go here, so I have Porta configure, I had this assigned to MIDI CC 27. And during this pattern, I'm actually changing the portamento time. So here it's faster and over here it's slower. And then after it's slower. So I wanted this slide to be very fast, and I wanted this one to be more exaggerated. So by automating, or sorry, by automating the portamento time, uh, you can achieve that effect. And the other automation is going to come later. So once again, let's hear that part. So here's, uh, this part took me a little while. And because again, I'm not a guitarist, this was not played with a MIDI guitar or uh, any, any other tricks. This was uh, just sequenced in and played on my keyboard. So the most obvious thing that's happening here, there is a lot of pitch wheel stuff happening. So this stuff was just, I was playing manually with the physical pitch wheel on the keyboard to get that kind of crazy vibrato. And then it uh, goes way down, of course. And it's all on one note. But while I'm bending down, I'm also doing a portamento slide. So if I don't do that, the slide is what gives it that extra sort of um, diving effect, I suppose you could say. And then there are a few, uh, what are those, uh, full chokes. But most notably here, there's another kind of automation, which is pitch bend range. So naturally, the instrument defaults to a uh, pitch bend range of two semitones. So you can bend up and down a whole note. Here, I'm actually increasing the pitch bend range to three here because I wanted that um, sort of vibrato to be wider. And then over here, I'm maxing it out. So this is now a pitch bend range of up to 12 semitones for the, uh, the effects here. Let's take a look at what this sounds like. So to get that dive, this would not be possible unless you had a wide pitch bend range, which is why I'm changing it in the middle of the pattern. And the same with these notes here. The sweeps are done by entering tapping mode. So tapping mode is an option, uh, and again, here I have it MIDI learned to turn it on. Uh, tapping mode basically forces all the notes to be hammered instead of played with a normal pick sound. And for this, I wanted it to sound like uh, somebody was actually sort of tapping all those individual notes. So it's not a perfect representation, and I had to sort of try to play this in live to get um, a more realistic timing rather than quantizing it. Likewise here, this is not tapping mode, but this is sort of played in live and then tweaked. I mean, uh, because the notes are overlapped, what you're actually hearing is sort of a lot of hammer on and pull off uh, articulations rather than uh, repicks. And the rest is just, you know, fun stuff, of course. No pitch automation really happening over there. This is mainly the big pitch stuff, and then over here. Um, and then there is some 
mod wheel vibrato for that last note. This is not a pinch squeal, believe it or not. This is, that's just a regular note that has vibrato on it. And then finally, for the end of the song, So again, same techniques. We have vibrato on the mod wheel, some pitch stuff here. So here I'm bending up to and down from a note. And I believe I'm doing a portamento time as well. So I really wanted that last slide to be, that octave slide to be very exaggerated. Um, with portamento time, what you're doing when you turn the knob lower, it's actually increasing the time. So it's decreasing the multiplier of the time. So if you have it higher up, it's like 200% faster, 300%. Down here, it's like 50% speed. And then the song ends after that. And of course, those nice low chugs. I recall correctly, they are in this pattern. Oh, lastly, uh, here's what I was doing with shreddage bass. Scooping the presence and the, uh, the edge anti-repetition on, and then in terms of the mixing on that, it is, uh, I have, again, Fab Filter Saturn giving it some serious compression and tape saturation, tape saturation in the uh, high end, and then some EQ to scoop it out. So uh, without that, it sounds a little bit more tinny. And I say tinny in the sense that um, because the notes are higher, you're not getting as much bass. So uh, with that extra EQ boosting the bass, and then scooping the mids, it sounds much more like what I would want for this song. So uh, one more time, let me just, uh, I'm not gonna play through the whole song, but just uh, maybe one of these patterns again. How about the, uh, the ending? Oh, also, I had a, a pitch bend up to that last note, too, of course. Anyway, so that is Shred the Night. Hopefully, you learned a few things. Um, I don't consider myself to be an expert guitar sequencer or anything like that. But I do think this is a testament to uh, how good Shreddage 2 can sound, even if you're not a guitarist and you don't have a MIDI guitar or anything like that. Um, so once again, Shreddage 2X is a free update. Anybody can get it if you have Shreddage 2. 100% free, you can check the link in the video description. Also, as of this video, we're offering the library, Shreddage 2 in full, for only $99. That's a pretty outstanding price, considering most other metal guitar libraries are like $200, $300, or even more. So definitely check that out, Shreddage 2 Absolute Electric Guitar. And uh, once again, this is Andrew Aversa, aka Zircon, and uh, peace out.